hearing from uh, Nancy Pelosi now reacting to the decision by the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. In the Congress, be aware of this, the Republicans are plotting a nationwide abortion ban. They cannot be allowed to have a majority in the Congress to do that. But that's their goal. And if you read, and again, we're all studying all this, but if you read what is in the very clear, one of the justices had his own statement. It's about contraception, in vitro fertilization, family planning. That is all what will spring from their decision that they made today. It's such a contradiction. Yesterday, to say the states <clears throat> cannot make laws governing the constitutional right to bear arms, and today they're saying the exact reverse, that the states can overturn a constitutional right for 50 years, a constitutional right for a woman having the right to choose. The hypocrisy is raging, but the harm is endless. What this means to women is such an insult. It's a slap in the face to women about using their own judgment to make their own decisions about their reproductive freedom. And again, it goes well. I always have said the termination of a pregnancy is just their opening act. It's just their front game. But because, but behind, behind it, and for years, I have seen in this Congress opposition to any family planning, domestic or global, when we have had those discussions and those debates and those votes on the floor of the House. This is deadly serious, but we are not going to let this pass. A woman's right to choose, reproductive freedom, is on the ballot in November. We cannot allow them to take charge so that they can institute their goal, which is to criminalize reproductive freedom, to criminalize it. Right now, they're saying in states that they can arrest doctors and all the rest. What is happening here? What is happening here? A woman's fundamental health decisions are her own to make in consultation with her doctor, her faith, her family, not some right-wing politicians of, that Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell pack the court with. While Republicans seek to punish and control women, Democrats will keep fighting ferociously to enshrine Roe v. Wade into the law of the land. This cruel ruling is outrageous and heart-wrenching, but make no mistake, again, it's all on the ballot in November. The Supreme Court has ended a constitutional right. This is 50 years proclaimed a constitutional right. What happened today was historic in many respects. Historic in that uh, it had not granted, recognized a constitutional right, and then reversed it. This is a first. And again, just before, it imposed a constitutional right to allow for concealed weapons. How about those justices coming before the senators and saying that they, they respected Sorry to say, the, the president of the court, that they respected the right of privacy in the Constitution of the United States. Did you hear that? Were they not telling the truth then? Again, just getting to the gun issue, because really, in preparation for this morning, I was really an exalted state about what happened in the United States Senate yesterday. Counterpoint to the dangerous decision of this Trumpian Supreme Court that they made yesterday. 
but a way to take us to, as the bill is called, community safety. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Right now, and I'm going to have to leave momentarily because we just finished voting on the rule, we will be debating the bill on the floor, and we expect a good bipartisan vote on it in the House. We congratulate the Senate on the work that they have done and the timeliness of it to be passed in the Senate in a strong bipartisan way on a day when the court made such a dangerous, dangerous decision. Uh, we will, uh, many of our House Democrats' proposal that are included in this package are that uh, keep deadly weapons out of dangerous hands by encouraging states to establish extreme risk protection order laws, ERPO, otherwise known as red flag laws, help put into straw purchases, close the boyfriend loophole. So many good things are in there. And it's not everything that we want. And we must keep moving toward background checks, but universal background checks, which will save the most lives. But this will save lives. And to listen to Lucy McGrath and other family members of those who have lost their loved ones, this is a giant step forward. Maybe not so much a giant, but a strong step forward. And if it's good enough for them, then we rejoice in passing it. As I say to members all the time with legislation, do not judge it for what isn't in it but respect it for what is. And there's much to be respected in this legislation. On a happier note, yesterday we celebrated 50 years of Title IX, which has transformed equality and opportunity in our country. Are you familiar with the words of Title IX? Yesterday we had Billie Jean King here once again celebrating Title IX, unveiling a portrait of, of um, Patsy Mink, who was the author in the House, working with Birch Bay in the Senate to make this the law of the land. And this is what it says. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Again, in honor of this anniversary, we unveiled a portrait which will hang in the halls. It's about our first, the first, she's actually the first woman of color to serve in the Congress. So she's honored for her first, but also for what she accomplished. We already have a painting of uh, Shirley Chisholm, the first African-American woman, and for her many accomplishments here. And of course, Jeanette, Jeanette, Jeanette Rankin, the first woman ever to serve in the Congress. That's our first uh, series. So, again, <clears throat> we're working on the Competes Act and lowering cost, and the Competes Act is part of that. Lower families' cost, energize manufacturing, and strengthen America's competitiveness now and in the future. I think we're coming, we seem to be able to find our areas of agreement where we have some negotiating to do and some things that we may have to say for another day. The real question is, do the Republicans in the Senate really want America to be independent? Do they really want to bring back jobs to be make it in America and allocate the resources uh, to make sure that happens, especially with chips, which are so important to our manufacturing 